So this is Cubit Chance. So we're going to explore the nine outputs of the Qubit Chance, giving us smooth, discrete, wavetable and blended random CVs, as well as a clock signal, a burst generator, white noise, digital noise and a rhythmic output with probability control. We can coin toss on the module, use an internal or external clock and CV that blend between smooth, discrete and wavetable. Right there with the LED showing as the position around that blend output. But to start with, let's use this discrete output and you can hear a beat in the background. Kick, snare, lots of compression, little bit of drive, reverb, all being heavily compressed together. But you can hear these hi-hats are moving. I'm CV modulating the decay time on a hi-hat module. And that's the discrete output from Chance. The green trace on the Mordax Data Oscilloscope shows the discrete output, which is a discrete stepped random voltage, much like sample and hold. We see the clock signal and the hi-hat. The audio doesn't come across too well when we're looking at the lower CV signals, but you get the idea. The attenuverter allows us to scale any of these outputs from completely off to fully open, this will go 0 to 8 volts. And you can hear it adding live feel and some groove and action to this basic drum beat, really. We can then invert and go from 0 to minus 8 volts, which isn't currently going to do anything because the hi hat can't go any shorter than itself. Let's take it out of the hi hat quickly, add in another drum layer. And let's try it into the pitch and speed of this drum sample. So that's discrete stepped random. Let's move on and check out the smooth random output. So let's check out the smooth random output. Now this is on the green trace, but I've got the attenuverter currently off. We can add some level. And I can also freeze, and there's an input for freeze, which is great for throwing in random bursts, which we will look at in a minute. Now I have the sound in the background which is the wavetable out of the E352 and you can see the wave there. The bottom wave is our carrier wave in our signal and I'm adding FM modulation controlled by the smooth output. Now per internal clock pulse this will seed a new random value and the voltage will move towards that value but it will never stop and reach that like a kind of slewed sample and hold that doesn't have a high enough slew time to stop it reaching and stepping and holding that new value. It will seed the new value and move towards it. Now if we externally clock this, this still becomes a rate control for the smooth which is great because you get independent control. So let's turn up our sound and listen to the modulation. It's modulating FM depth. See that green trace and we can just hear this random fluctuating smooth voltage. Now again we can invert, so if I was to put the FM higher, we could then let the random voltage pull this down into the cleaner, cleaner wave.
let's stick with positive modulation. Add a beat back in. Now let's patch the random burst output to the freeze so we can actually freeze and hold this modulation. <laughs> because it's frozen itself, it's stopped. That's the smooth, fluctuating, random voltage. So let's check out the wavetable output. I have a sine wave that I'm going to wave fold with this wavetable out. This is currently frozen, and what this does upon freezing the value of chance, rather than actually completely halting the outputs like the smooth and the discrete, it freezes the changes in the wavetable LFO. So the wavetable LFO randomly per clock pulse, which you will see here. And I've also got a kick just playing with this clock. You can hear and see this in time. Per coin toss or clock pulse, internal, external, it will decide a random wave shape and a random rate. So if you want a divide to triangle, a times four saw, a full bar long stepped ramp for example there's a few sort of waveforms in there and it will move between these in time tempo synced divisions so this is going to move the fold amount let's turn it up watch it on this green trace and check out this wavetable lfo <laughs> So although it's doing some wobbly wave folder stuff there, this can be used for anything. Stylistically, this is an open book for interesting, lifelike, organic kind of patching by using random to change things around a patch. You could heavily attenuate these. Let's set a slight fold amount and just ever so slightly tickle it with this random LFO. So that into a filter or VCA, it's just adding a subtle bit of life and movement in time, random, great. Let's check out the blend output, which will blend between the previous outs. So let's turn it up. There's the smooth, indicated by the blue LED. Let's go to stepped. see in here it stepped but let's bring the kick in we'll see this is in time the wavetable LFO and we can mix between them all you can modulate the blend I will plug into the blend just underneath the button and let's use the smooth output. Stepping, smoothly modulating the wavetable LFOs, these four random CVs out of chance. Well, there is. They're off, they offer so much in one package for a random module. 
let's check out the bottom row of outputs including the noise, the burst and the rhythm. So let's check out the rhythm output and I've put a little LED cable in the module so you can see what's going on. We've also got the green trace on the Mordax data showing us these random triggers or rhythmic triggers. We have a knob to control the rhythm and all the way to the left this sets the probability as low as possible for any sort of change and it also sets a division of the clock rate by four. If the knob is all the way to the right, the probability of change is as high as possible and set to both divide and multiply. Let's check that out. Backing that off. We also have a CV in, but I've got a wider patch set up, so I'm going to take the blend output into the input for that knob. So we can influence this probability of those changes, and we've got whole notes, half notes, quarters, eight, sixteenths, thirty seconds, and eighth and sixteenth note triplets. What it's doing is every new clock pulse sets a new random division or multiplication and we just get a five millisecond trigger. To set this in time, just triggering this snare, let's add a kick. And I'm gonna add in these extra parts. So the length of the noise in the snare drum sound is going to be controlled by the smooth output. And that's the blue trace on the data. I'm going to change the cutoff with a filter on the noise element of that snare with the discrete output. Let's add in a couple of extra elements. We've got this random snare over the kick. First the clap. hats, some effects, which is a granular delay line, you can hear that grabbing these changes in the snare tones and running them through this granular delay. I've also got a bass. Some sidechain 16th notes, and I'm using the wavetable output to morph the tone. So, all together. Rhythm output's great for adding random elements that you can control the probability of, the division of, and also influence that by CV for building up fills and tension within your beats. So, here's a new beat, uh, based around the other patch, but let's strip this back and look at the burst output and we'll build everything back up, including the rest of the modulation from Chance. So this is the burst output and at every clock pulse or coin toss we can manually coin toss through. Um, a gate burst is generated with a random number of gate signals, random number of rests between the gates and a random number and a random duty cycle for each successive gate which is the gate length or pulse width or duty cycle. A few ways to name that. So we'll see the length and kind of width of these triggers change. On the trace below, you can see I've patched this trigger out into an envelope with a little bit of release added 
So the blue is my envelope controlling the level of the sound that you're hearing. And this is the trigger that is coming out of the burst. Or I should say the gate, because it's got a varying gate length. Let's just listen to that for a second. I'm going to set it against a clap playing on every two and four in my bar. Let's bring in the other elements of the beat. And some effects. The effects my granular delay line again. Now, the pitch of the random sound is changing. Let's get rid of the other drums. And that's based on the discrete output, which is going up into a quantizer, just selecting between a root, a minor third, and a fifth, punched in. If I take this out, the notes all stay the same, but I like a bit of pitch change on this. So, stepped random pitch changes that I'm then quantizing. The wavetable output is modulating the tone. Let's take the effect out. And this is just giving us some folding over this wavetable. The clock is clocking Pamela's workout to the side, which is creating the beat. But one other thing I'd like to look at is this digital noise output. Now, if I just let this play fully, you can hear with each clock pulse, which you can see on the coin toss, we're getting a change in random frequency in square waves, which is giving us noise, a digital noise with a tone that's changing using the smooth output to pan the sound around. And just a rhythm that I've programmed elsewhere just to let the sound through. Let's get rid of that, bring back the random burst, bring in the beat and effects. So you heard that long note there, that's that random duty cycle. Let's add a bit of the digital noise. So that's just a couple of examples of how you can use the smooth fluctuating random voltage, the discrete stepped random voltage, the random wavetables, the blended CV output, clock, the burst, the rhythm with a probability in CV, we've got CV over blend, we can freeze everything, white noise which is plain white noise. You can patch these to anything, sequences, modulation, wavetables, effects, anything you can patch any of these to, not just the examples given. Cheers for watching and be sure to go check out Chance from Qubit.